in a previous video, I had disassembled the power feed on my Bridgeport mill down to just about its smallest components. Uh, the primary reason was to replace that spiroid gear that you see. The original gear was fairly chewed up, had quite a number of missing teeth. Like I mentioned before, I, I don't have a clear cut way of how to put this back together. I've not put something like this together before, so I'm guessing a bit. I do have an exploded diagram that I'm using as a reference. Um, I do know that this uh, gear hub um, and driving clutch assembly is too big to fit in either of the side holes. So I know it has to go on the shaft first. Uh, before I can actually drive the shaft all the way into the um, left-hand bearing. I'm having trouble getting the snap ring over one of the shoulders on the shaft. So I'm going to pull it back out and make sure I'm putting on the correct uh, snap ring in the right spot. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and give it another try and doing the same thing. I'm putting the snap ring on first and then there's a thrust washer that goes on next. Um, and then this gear hub assembly will, will go on after that. I was able to get the snap ring over the shoulder and get the thrust bearing um, past it. So now I'm figuring, okay, I can just tap this shaft and that bearing won't move. And I don't know what I was thinking because I knew that wasn't going to happen. So <clears throat> now I've got the bearing that's becoming unseated and none of this is going to work. So I'm going to have to take it all apart and try again. <laughs> So I've got the bearing reseated and I've got this, you know, reassembled to where it was before. So now I figure, okay, well, let me just jam a cutoff piece, a two by four in there next to the bearing. So that way when I'm tapping on the shaft and the bearing won't move. And I'm sure some of you are yelling at your monitor right now. Why doesn't he put the shaft in the other way? It's because the diameter on the very end of the shaft is wider than the ID of the bearing. It won't fit that way. It has to go in from left to right. And of course, this didn't work either. So now I'm thinking maybe I can use this hub to my advantage. Um, I disassembled the hub completely and took out the clutch. So it's just the hub and the spyroid gear. And now I'm figuring, okay, well, if I can push that on top of the bearing, that's a little bit sturdier, um, and really jam it up next to it, but leave myself some space for the shaft, then maybe I can tap the shaft through and the bearing won't move. Well, they do say the third time's the charm, so I was happy to see that that actually worked. And with the shaft happily in place, next will be to install the snap ring and thrust bearing. And because I did not include the driving clutch um, in the assembly when I put the shaft back in, I now have to put it in with the hub in situ. So raised up the hub with some scraps of wood and then dropped the um, driving clutch 
uh, on there. It's a, it's a bit of a press fit. Um, and so just kind of drove it home with a brass punch. Now I do fully appreciate that there's likely a way better way to do all of this. Um, maybe with the right kind of a hydraulic press or an arbor press, but unfortunately I don't have any of those. So I'm working with what I have. With the driving clutch driven as far as I think it needs to go, um, the next thing that needs to be installed is a thrust bearing and then another one of my favorite things, snap rings. Um, I don't know why these things give me so much trouble, but I guess I just don't have the dexterity in my hands as I used to. But this one, <laughs> this one's kind of in an awkward position. So I just grabbed a couple of pick hooks and made it work. With the snap ring uh, in place, uh, next is the driven clutch, the driven side of the clutch mechanism. First, this uh, wood roof key will get set in place, and then um, the uh, driven clutch uh, will get slid on. A quick tap to set this key a little flatter. And behind the clutch is a clutch spring. Uh, and then to prepare for the dial holder, I've already seated the woodruff key. The dial holder already has connected to it the bearing and a seal. I left this together when I disassembled the power feed. This bearing cap is just held in place with three socket head cap screws. Put a little oil on the dial holder before I go ahead and install the dial itself and then followed behind that is the dial lock nut. And these are some parts for the safety handle. There's a, a bushing, a spring, a thin washer, and then the handle itself. This assembly is designed to allow the handle to spin freely when the power feed's engaged as to not um, create a safety hazard. You just push it in if you want to operate it manually. Next, I can reinstall the clutch shaft from the bottom. Before sending the shaft through the top of the casting here, I need to um, slide on the uh, clutch detent cam. There's a roll pin that holds the cam in position on the shaft, so I'm just lining it up here with a punch uh, before inserting the roll pin and uh, driving it through.
Now I can reinstall the clutch arm uh, assembly that engages and disengages the clutch. A little out of order, but I'm reinstalling the shaft coupler and taper pin. One end of the original clutch spring was broken, so rather than take the chance that it's going to come off that clutch arm, uh, I decided to go ahead and order a new one and go ahead and put it in now. Not that it's cold in the shop right now, but I went ahead and put these gloves on just to make sure I had a good grip on everything while reinstalling this spring. There we go. And uh, putting this little tiny key in um, for the handle before I put in the handle upside down. Yes, I realize now that it's upside down. I have since fixed that. And the last piece of the puzzle here is the cover. I've already placed the detent and spring and the paper gasket is in place. And I can already tell that this isn't right. I am guessing the detent and spring probably fell down inside of this thing when I was putting the cover on. And sure enough, that detent and the spring came right out of the cover. So I'll try repositioning the whole assembly a little more vertical before putting this back together again. And I think that's it. And I think that's it for this video. We'll see you on the next one when I get the electronics put together and get it back on the machine. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.